Stay all day up. You are now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, techniques, philosophies, mindsets, all under one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is the real job. I'm going to explain to you the real job of a coach or trainer. This is any kind of coach or trainer, sports coach, business coach, uh, life coach, whatever other kind of coach there is, all kinds of coaches out there. I'm going to tell you what their real job is. That is whether you are on the receiving end or you're on the giving end. We'll get to that in a minute. First, let me tell everybody that I have a daily motivation text that I send out every single day to everyone who is in my texting community, and it is free to join my texting community. If you would like to join, all you got to do and receive my daily motivation, all you got to do is text me at my number. This is the number I'll be texting you from. It is 305-384-6894. Once you text me there, you'll be getting a daily motivation every day. And here's a bonus that an unadvertised bonus of that number is that that is me you are texting. So when you text, that number is going to my phone and I can respond to your text right there. So every day I spend 20, 30 minutes, actually it's becoming like 30, 40 minutes every day responding to my texts as that community expands and I'm responding to more text messages. So you text me at that number. Again, the number is 305-384-6894. Text me right there and you will be part of my texting community. And there are other perks and bonuses that I have not mentioned that you will get by being part of my text community free of charge straight to your phone every day. Now, the job of a coach or trainer. There are many episodes where I talked about coaching, giving it and receiving it. Most recently in episode number 1968, I asked the question, are you uncoachable? How do you know if you are actually helping your coach help you? In episode 1912, a framework for being coached. In episode 1762, how to be coachable and get maximum value from your mentors and coaches. Episode number 1672, transitioning from being a player to being a coach in episode 1241, the key growth principle is being coachable because to grow, you need to take information, advice, insight from someone other than yourself. You don't have enough time or energy to learn everything on your own. So you had to be coachable enough to take it all in. Those are just a few episodes where I've talked about coaching. I got probably about 20 more that I'm not gonna list here simply because it would take too much time. But if you go to work on your game podcast.com, you can see a full list of every episode in the history of the show. You can just do the search function, Command F if you're on a Mac or Control F if you're on a PC, and you can search for any episodes where I talk about coaching, at least in the title. Again, that is at workonyourgamepodcast.com. I have a list of every episode in the history of the show listed right there on that page. So scroll down to the bottom, click the little button, and it will show itself, and you can scroll through and search every episode I've ever put out in the history of the show, over 2,000 of them. So. So now that you know about those episodes where I talked about coaching today, I'm going to tell you the real job of a coach or a trainer. So whether you are the coach who is offering the coaching or you are the recipient of the coaching, I'm going to tell you what the real job of that person is so that you know exactly what they're there for if you're receiving it and you know what you're there for if you're the one giving it out. Point number one, Tommy, once again, the real job of a coach or a trainer. Your job is to tell, show and display to your clients what other people are afraid to tell, show and display to them. I shall repeat, your job coach is to tell, show and display to your clients, your subjects, your students, your whatever you call them, what other people are afraid or unable to tell, show and display to them. That is the job of a coach. I don't care what type of coach we're talking. If you are a business coach, your job as the business coach is to tell your business coaching clients the things that other people are not telling them about their business and about themselves that are getting in the way of them taking their business where their business needs to go. If you are a life coach, your job is to tell your clients what they are doing, missing, not seeing, or pretending to not see that is keeping them from maximizing themselves as a person. If you are a football coach, your job is to point out to your offensive lineman how his bad footwork and poor technique is causing him to get beat by the defensive end every time they run a certain pass play and that's why the quarterbacks keep getting sacked because the offensive lineman is messing up. If whatever type of coaching you're doing, if you're a personal trainer, your job is to show your 
personal training clients why even though they're working really hard in the gym the bad decisions they make in the kitchen and in the grocery store are undoing all the hard work that they are paying you to help them do that is your job to show them what nobody else is showing them to tell them what nobody else is telling them and to make clear and conscious what maybe they unconsciously understand but they have not uh, forced themselves to come to grips with at least not yet that is your job as a coach nobody hires a coach because they need to make a friend Maybe some people hire a coach to make a friend, maybe on an unconscious level, they might be thinking that, but that's not really why somebody hires a coach. It's not against the law for you to become friends with your client, but the purpose of someone hiring a coach is because they're looking for some specific results. There's something that they're looking for and that's why they hired you in the first place. That's why they came to you. And by results, what I mean is showing and sharing what your friends cannot show them, what their friends cannot show them. Because if Let's say if someone becomes a coaching client, you join my Bulletproof Mastermind, my third day mastermind, work with me one on one, Bulletproof working with me in a group. You don't come there because you need a friend. Uh, nobody pays to make a friend. What you're paying for is for someone to show you things and help you see things that otherwise you wouldn't see or get shown on your own because you already had friends before you knew who I was. You had friends before you went and hired a personal trainer. You had friends before you joined the sports team. The purpose of the coach, again, even though they could become your friend, their purpose is to show you what your friends ain't showing you, what your friends are not telling you. This is why you have the value of people who are not your friends in life. I have a whole episode on that. People who can tell you what you need to hear and not what you wanna hear simply because they do not have a need or a desire even to be your friend. They don't need you to like them, therefore they can tell you stuff that you don't like and it's not gonna hurt your relationship with them because they weren't your friend in the first place. This is why you need these people in your life. And many of you, need to have the mindset of understanding the value of those type of people before you even go, you, you're not even gonna go seek them out until you have the mindset of understanding their value. Many of you don't understand the value of a person like that, therefore you're not seeking them out. They exist, there are plenty of them out there, but if you're not willing to hear what they have to tell you, then their value cannot reflect itself on you and in your life. You gotta be willing to accept that. So by results, a means to an end of those results is someone being able to show you, coaching client, that and share with you what your friends can't show you and can't share with you or what your friends won't show you or tell you. Because I think your friends, they know you pretty well. All right, that's why they're your friend. They know these things about you. They just won't tell you to your face. <laughs> they just won't say it out loud to you. And or, let's be clear, you won't take it from them because they're your friend. So you need somebody who doesn't have that same relationship with you who can tell you these things and you don't have the emotional connection to their words that you have to your friend's words. Because some of you, your best friend could be your coach if you didn't have an emotional connection to them because they know all your weaknesses the same way your coach notices them. How your coach noticed them in six weeks but your best friend know you for 10 years, they can't tell you. They know, they just can't tell it to you and you can't hear it from them. But you can hear it from a coach. Now this is the value of a coach. Many of us have friends who, if that friend told you everything that they knew about you, including your weaknesses, everything that they think about you, and everything that they can notice about you that you're trying not to show, they wouldn't be your friend if they told you that because you couldn't take it coming from that individual, but you can take it from a coach. You would be too offended by what your friend said to you because your friend said it, but your coach could say the exact same thing and they'll take it. I have many times had uh, a parent come to me or even a sport coach come to me and say, well, you know, Dre, I have my, my kid or my players listen to your video or listen to your podcast and you're telling them the same thing that I say to them all the time. But when you say it, they finally get it. Whereas when I said it, they weren't really hearing it. And that's how it works with human beings. We are emotional creatures and some of us have more control over, over our emotions than others, but we all are emotional creatures. And there are certain people that we can't hear certain things from. But other people, we hear the exact same thing and we'll immediately accept it. This is just how it is as people. And this is the value of a coach. And coaches, when you understand this, it'll probably help you sell more coaching and get your message out to more people. So this is where you, the coach, you come in at this point in understanding that people need to hear certain things. And it's not that you are just so amazingly insightful that you're the first person in the world to notice these things about a person. You might be, but it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily the thing. The thing is, you're the one that can say it to them and they'll accept it. This is where you come in as the not friend, as I referred to in episode, that was episode 1031, the value of not friends in your life. Nobody hires you because they need a friend. All right, nobody pays for a friend. 
All right, now they might want to make a friend, but that's not the reason that they hired you. They hired you to get the results. And even if they don't say it in so many words, I am here to tell you. So I'm coaching the coaches right now. I'm training the trainers. All right, even though your clients might want to be your friend and maybe they have become your friend, remember that you're there to help them get results. All right, don't let your friendship get in the way of the actual results because that's what they're there for. Do your damn job, trainer, coach. Point number two, today's topic once again is the real job of a coach or a trainer. Make clear exactly how things are going to work and enforce the rules. If you're a coach or a trainer, you got to tell people how things are going to go and then actually make them go the way that you said they were going to go. Make people show up when they're supposed to show up. Somebody's not showing up to your personal training session when they're supposed to. There needs to be, you need to let them know something. There needs to be some type of penalty. Something needs to happen. They can't just no-show you or show up whenever they feel like it or not do what they're supposed to be doing. Make them pay what, for what they say they want. Someone says that they want to lose 30 pounds, all right, then, and they say they don't want to do that extra set of burpees and say, well, mofo, you said you wanted to lose 30 pounds, or do you really want to lose 30 pounds? Yes, okay, then get your ass on that floor and do that damn next set of burpees. Now, whatever it is they say that they want, your job as the coach or the trainer, again, what did I just tell you on point number one? To tell them and show them what other people are not qualified to tell them and show them. That is your job. To oftentimes when people come for, like the type of people that I work with as a coach are type of people who are already performing. These are people who are already successful, however you define success. They're already making money. They're already doing business. They're already doing their thing. All right, so they don't need someone to just tell them how great they are. They are looking, and these are people who would be successful, and they can create success even if I was not around, even if they never hired a coach. It's not like they would be a failure without a coach. The reason that they look for a coach is because these are high-performing people. These are people who want to go to a higher level than they already are, even though they're already above most other people. So what are they looking for? They're looking for someone to put a foot in their ass because they want to go further than they've already gone. This is why... I told this story a few months ago. I was watching this documentary. It was called Tom versus Time. And it was about Tom Brady, the quarterback, a football quarterback. And it was an off season after one of those years, he had just won another Super Bowl in New England. This is before he went to Tampa Bay. And in one of the scenes in the documentary, docu docuseries, Tom flew to California. He's from California, but he lives in, at the time he was living in New England. So he flew across the country, right? And he hired this quarterback coach. And his coach was helping Tom Brady with his throwing technique in offseason. And Tom was out there on the field working with this coach. And his coach is kind of tweaking his technique and you know, telling him how to do it better and making adjustments, small adjustments to Tom's technique. And the interesting thing about this, and I pointed this out then and I'll point it out now. Tom Brady is arguably, arguably the greatest football player of all time. He's probably in the top 10 greatest players of all time, especially by achievements and accomplishments. Why is this guy? who already has more accomplishments than any player who's playing in the NFL right now. He's older than anybody playing in the NFL with more achievements than all of them. Why is this guy hiring a trainer in the offseason? I mean, any player in the NFL could afford to not hire a trainer is Tom Brady. This guy's hiring a trainer, flying to the trainer. He didn't have the trainer come to him. He went to the trainer and paid this dude to help him with his technique for throwing the football, the thing that he might be better at than anyone in the history of known existence. He's hiring somebody to help him with that. Those are the kind of people that I coach. Those kind of people don't need somebody to tell them how great they are. They need somebody to tell them, here's how we make a slight tweak that's going to take you to the next level. So your job, coach, is to make sure that people are doing what the things that are necessary for them to get the result that they told you that they wanted, which is why they came to you in the first place. Make sure you rewind that so you hear what I just said. Make them do what they don't want to do. Make them see what they might be trying to, as hard as they can, to not see. That is your job. That's why they hired you, even if they don't say it. It is not their job to say it. All right. Their job, your coaching clients, their job was to find you and your job is to say it. It's not their job to say what they don't want to say. It's not their job to say the things that they don't want to hear. That's the reason why they're not saying it, because they don't want to hear it. Your job is to tell them the things that they don't want to hear, but the things that they actually need to hear. That is why you're there. And yes, let me be clear. Sometimes they might bristle at you telling them what they need to hear. Sometimes they might be a little bit pissed off. Sometimes they might leave the session not so happy with you. But if they are the type of performer that I think they are, the type of people who hire coaches, because most people look, most people need coaches, but very few people actually go get them. All right, so the type of people who actually go get them, all right, they will appreciate you in the long run for telling them what they need to hear.
And if they don't, then they weren't the right type of people for you anyway. They would have left eventually anyway. So good riddance to bad rubbish, as they said. All right, that's why they came to you in the first place. Their job was to find you. Your job is to say it. It is better to be bold and tell people what they need to hear than uh, be broke and be a bum as a coach because you're just trying to be people's friends. All right, nobody needs to pay for a friend. And here's where many coaches and trainers fail as we move on to point number three. I'm gonna tell you where they fail. Today's topic, once again, is the real job of a coach or a trainer. Any of you who's a coach or a trainer you need to check yourself and make sure you are actually doing your job. You might think you're doing your job, but if you're not following what I'm telling you here today, you are not actually doing your job and you are doing a disservice to your clients, even though they may not be able to tell. But any of you who is listening to this who has a coach or a trainer, all right, look at your coach or trainer and make sure they're doing these things that I'm telling you. Number three, trainers, coaches, stop trying to be nice to and be friends with your clients. Now, again, you can be uh, pleasant. You should be respectful and maybe you will become a friend. Maybe you will build a relationship and you'll get to know their, their kids and their families and they'll get to know yours and all of that. But that is not the goal. That's not the point. That's not the reason that you're together. All right. They are not. You are not there to be their friend. They are not there because they needed a friend. They already had friends before they met you and they will have friends that 10 years from now they'll still have friends, whether you're working with them or not. You are in business and your job in business, your first job in business is taking care of the business. What is the business? What do I tell you? Getting people results. Now you already notice when that person became your client, they told you, all right, the reason why I want you to coach me or train me or whatever word it is, is because, or teach me is because I want result X, Y, Z, A, B, C. All right. They want that result. That is the business. Make sure you're taking care of the business first and then any ancillary benefits that come with handling the business, you take them, but you got to make sure you're prioritizing the business. If that is indeed your priority. Now, if your priority is pleasure and your personal uh, making friends or whatever you want to call it, then OK, go ahead and do that. But right here, we're talking about business today, just in case you didn't know. So make sure you handle the business first. Now, if a friendship comes from handling the business, so be it. Congratulations. If not, that's fine, too, because you handled the business because handling the business, you know what that's going to do? Now you got a success story. Now you have a testimonial. Now you have a satisfied client or student who's going to go sing your praises to the world. And now what can you do? You can take that, those results that you produce, and you can tell everybody else about it. And now you can do it again. Now you're going to get another client because they say, oh, you did that for him or right, do it for me. You did that for Miss Jones. Do it for me. You did that for Lisa. All right, do it for me. Now they'll want it because they know that you produce results. Now you're removing the, the fear from them because your prospects are looking at you like wondering, does this person actually produce results? Now that they see somebody else jump first and they got results, now they'll believe that they can get results. And now the same thing can happen. So if a friendship comes from it, so be it. If not, that's fine too, as long as the business gets handled. You are in business to produce results and producing results produces money. All right, not there to make friends. Many of you are in business ostensibly to make money, but your actions reflect that you want to be liked, that you're trying to make friends. Which one is it? Because at some point you might have to choose between taking care of business and making friends and being liked and being nice. In episode 1299, I told you to stop trying to be liked by everybody. Many of you are running your business as if you're trying to be liked by everybody who comes across you. And the problem with that is you're trying to be everything to everybody because to get everybody to like you, you had to be you have to kind of adjust yourself to every single person. The problem is that's impossible because everybody is unique, as are you. So stop trying to be liked by everybody. Think of your favorite. If you look back in your life, think of your favorite coaches, your favorite trainers, your favorite bosses, your favorite authority figures, whether it was a parent, it could be a school teacher, a, a religious leader, a neighborhood person, highly respected adult in your neighborhood when you were growing up. Think of your favorite people in that position. Were they the people who tried to make you like them or were they the people who got the most out of you and taught you the most simply because they were pushing you to be the best version of yourself, which did not necessarily mean making you like them, did not mean being your friend, did not mean telling you what you wanted to hear. It meant showing you and telling you what you needed to hear. Is this true or is it not? So if you think about that, the people who were the best for you, the ones you most remember are not usually the ones who made you feel the best. They're the ones who got the most out of you, at least if you're the type of person that this show is targeted towards. Because this show is targeted towards people who are performers, people who want to work on their game, who want to get better, who want to take themselves to the next level, who may be doing their thing already, but you want to do more of your thing. If you're that type of person, the people that you remember the most are the ones who pushed you to get the most out of you, even if you didn't necessarily like them in the process of them doing it. But in the end, you can look back five years later, five weeks later, 10 years later, a lifetime later and say, damn, you know what? 
I wasn't really feeling that person at the moment, but the things that they were saying and the things that they had me doing, damn, that shit worked. That's the type of person that you wanna be for your clients. Why? Because it's gonna produce results and results, you can trade on results. You can leverage results to get more clients. You can leverage results to make more money. You can leverage results to raise your prices. Now, if you're in business, again, I'm assuming you're in business to do business. All right, if you're in business to do business, I would think these are all things that you want. If I'm wrong, somebody can let me know. But with all that said, let's recap today's class, which is the real job of a coach or a trainer. Point number one, your job is to tell, tell, show, and display to your clients what other people are afraid or incapable of telling, showing, and displaying to them. People do not hire a coach to make a friend. The purpose is to get results. Results mean, a mean to those results, mean to the ends of those results, showing and sharing what their friends can't. All right, this is why you need to be a not friend. As referred to in episode 1031, people want results even if they don't say it in so many words. I'm telling you what they are not telling you. Point number two, make clear exactly how things are working and enforce your rules. Make sure people are following your protocol because you are the one in charge. They hire you to be in charge. So be in charge, take charge. Marcus Lemonis on the show The Profit that would come on NBC. Whenever he took over a business, he made it clear as soon as he wrote the check. He said, if you take this check, I want you to understand something. I'm in charge and everything I say goes. He would say that every single time. If I give you this $800,000, Mr. Business Owner, to save your business, I will be in charge and everything I say is how things are going to go, even if you don't like it, because now I'm in charge. And he would not let them take the money unless they agreed to that statement. You need to be the exact same way, even though they're the one paying you. You are getting paid to be in charge. Point number two. I mean, that is point number two. Better to be bold and do this than be broke and trying to be nice to everybody. Now, here's where many trainers and coaches fail, which is point number three. You're trying to be nice and trying to be friends with everybody. They are not there to be your friend. You are in business and the first job of business is producing results. And when you produce results, you will make money. And when you make money, guess what? Everybody's going to want to be your friend. You can choose your friends at that point. So you're in business to produce results and make money, not there to make friends and be liked. Many of you are in business ostensibly to make money, but your actions are reflecting that you're trying to make friends. Stop trying to be liked by everybody. I told you this in episode 1299. Think of your favorite coaches, trainers, bosses, religious leaders, parents, adult figures, authority figures that you had in your life. These are not the people who try to be your friend. They are the people who push you to get the most out of you and taught you the most in the process, even though you might not have liked it so much while it was taking place. This is your job as a coach or a trainer. Now, with all that said, Two things. First of all, you want to get my daily motivation text every single day. I know you do. All you got to do is text me on my number, which is 305-384-6894. And secondly, if you're a type of person who either, A, you want to be coached so that you can get that foot in your ass, you can take your performance that you're already doing to its next level and really take it where it needs to go. And I know you're that type of person. If you're listening to this show and you just listen to everything I just said, join my Bulletproof Mastermind, which is my group coaching program. I go on to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Just click the button. You'll see all the information. You can get started. And any of you who wants to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, also on that same page, workonyourgameuniversity.com. I have my third day mastermind, which is my one-on-one -on -one coaching. And that's that. I don't need to say anything else. Do your jobs. Work on your game. Dre all day.